on a presidential election. She's challenged the, you know, fact that President Trump lost, and she's promoted the big lie about election fraud. She's also endorsed executing Democratic lawmakers on Facebook in 2018 and 2019. She's also suggested that the mass shootings in Las Vegas and Parkland were so-called false flag operations, in other words, fakes. Green has now been rewarded for all of that with a seat on the House Education and Labor Committee. This morning, we are seeing this video before Green was elected to Congress of her harassing Parkland massacre survivor David Hogg on his way to talk to lawmakers about gun reform. David, why are you supporting the red flag laws? If there had been, if Scott Peterson, the resource officer at Parkland, had done his job, then Nicholas Cruz wouldn't have killed anybody in your high school, or at least protected them. Why are you supporting red flag gun laws that attack our Second Amendment rights? And why are you using kids to get to, as a barrier? Do you not know how to defend your stance? So I'm walking. He's got nothing to say. Sad. He has nothing to say because there really isn't anything to say, you guys. He has nothing to say because he's paid to do this. Guess what? I'm a gun owner. I'm an American citizen. And I have nothing but this guy with his George Soros funding and his major liberal funding has got everything. I want you to think about that. That's where we are. And he's a coward. He can't say one word because he can't defend his stance. Joining us now is David Hogg. He is the co-founder of the March for Our Lives. David, great to see you, um, as always. That was March of 2019. Do you remember that moment? Do you remember seeing her and what you were thinking? Yeah, I, I absolutely remember that. And I remember thinking, you know, I'm just going to uh, keep a straight face and practice my mindfulness uh, meditation that I've often done to help cope with my PTSD and, you know, my ADHD as well. Um, and it was actually really helpful in that regard because we can see in that video, they're clearly trying to get a rise out of me um, and uh, the fellow activists that I'm with by asking incredibly triggering questions, saying the name of my shooter and uh, the name of the shooter at my high school and, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, as I was told growing up, it's just better not to respond to bullies and just fuck and just walk away. I don't know how you did it, David. I don't know how you did it. And I mean, she was baiting you so much and she was relentless in following you. She was heckling you. I mean, obviously, you had survived the Parkland school shooting. So she's bringing all of this up. She also said during that that she said, I have a concealed carry permit. I carry a gun, she said, for protection. Did you how did you interpret that? Did you hear that as a threat when she was chasing you saying that? Oh, absolutely. But, you know, what I always say to myself, Allison, is that if it, you know, if they shoot me, they prove my point. And the reality is they can't kill a movement because uh, the reality uh, with that as well, and, you know, it's funny when they say that we're paid off and stuff. And I can tell you that there's no amount of money that you could ever pay any of us to do this work because that's not why we do it. None of us want to be doing this, but we have to because sadly, corrupt elected officials like Marjorie Taylor Greene are in Congress and would rather choose to protect guns uh, than children. And it's just a horrific reality. You know, can I can I just point out how ridiculous it is that it's on the survivors of gun violence to stand up to gun violence to be the ones to try to end it? Why we have? Why do we have elected officials if that's the case? Why can't they do their jobs? And you know, she talks as well about you know saying that she's an American citizen, almost as if implying I'm not just as American as she is or any of us aren't, simply for not wanting our friends to die anymore. Yeah. That's just horrific and disgusting. There's a lot of absurdities of this and disgusting things. Though also she says, look at him. He gets to talk to Congress people. I have nothing. She doesn't mention that she uh, and her husband had a multi-million dollar construction company. I mean, she acts as though she has nothing. That's not true. And the fact that you at 18 were able to get in and speak to lawmakers and she with her crazy heckling couldn't. I mean, I guess she's just very resentful about that. Yeah, I think it's actually kind of ironic because she's kind of self-owning herself by saying an 18 year old can do her job uh, better than her with a group of ma mostly people under 20. Um, like our, one of our head lobbyists, Eve Levinson at the time, who was setting up a lot of those meetings, um, you know, saying a group of basically teenagers can do her job better than her um, at, as someone that is now currently a sitting congresswoman. And that's part of the reason why, uh, in response to this March for Our Lives, is, you know, doing everything we can. We have some plans in the works, too, to figure out how we can um, 
helps support efforts to elect better people that are morally just leaders. Um, and part of that is asking people to text resign to 954 uh, 954. And that's again, resign to 954 954 in order to uh, get involved. Let's talk about that, okay? Because that, at the time that she was chasing after you, heckling you, she was not an elected leader. She then won a seat from Georgia this past November to go become a congresswoman. She has just been assigned a plum assignment to be on the education, the House Education and Labor Committee. What is your message to leader Kevin McCarthy about whether or not that woman is equipped to have a committee uh, position like that? My message to Kevin McCarthy is take all of her committee assignments away. Along with that, also don't support her when she runs for reelection again and try to get her primary. If you say this is not your party, actually call it out and hold her accountable because Republicans always act as if they're the party of decency and respect. But would the party of decency and respect question whether or not school shootings happened? Would they harass the survivors of these shootings for having different opinions than them? I don't think so. And I think if Kevin McCarthy doesn't think so either, he needs to actually stand up and do something about this, this Congresswoman. You know, David, I don't know if you remember this, but I saw you right after that happened. We came down, our CNN crew, to interview you right, I think it was a day after, maybe two days after, for our Champions for Change special, and we featured you. And you didn't mention that, of course, because I think it's so commonplace for you. How often, yeah. how often do you encounter a crazy person who tries to tell you that Parkland didn't happen? Honestly, for, for a while, it was almost a daily occurrence before I went to school. Um, there were people that would film me at events screaming that, you know, I'm, a, I'm some kind of paid actor that, you know, never was there or the shooting didn't happen or that I'm lying and paid off by George Soros. And, I, you know, I just want to say as well, Allison, I don't know where the millions of dollars is that I've been, quote unquote, paid by George Soros is, but I really wish somebody would tell me so that I could have, you know, all of college and hopefully law or grad school if I'm lucky enough to get in you know, already paid for and be set and get my parents a nice place. But sadly, that money doesn't exist at all. And, and um, Dave, I mean, David, but, yeah. and listen, I mean, we we feel we can't believe that you have to endure all of this. But now that there's a new administration, can we just end on this note? Are you seeing any progress? Are you hopeful or where are you with your mission? Yeah, I, I'm glad that you asked that. And, you know, I think that the Biden administration honestly needs to do a bit of a better job of talking about gun violence, you know, uh, in the first place. There are a lot of challenges that we understand that they've had to deal with, um, such as the pandemic, the major recession, the climate crisis and others. But we also need to realize that we have an American epidemic on our hands that is killing nearly 40,000 Americans annually and was at a record level last year with some uh, in some demographics, the number of, you know, um, individuals affected going up nearly 40 percent in the past year. We need to confront this head on. And I really hope that the administration listens to us and actually acts on creating a national director of gun violence prevention. Um, and also, I want to let them know, you know, if any of them are watching this right now, call me, call any of us at March, call anybody that signed on with the 300 survivors that signed a letter uh, demanding that, you know, essentially that you would, you make good on your promise that you had during the campaign to take this on and do that. We understand there were challenges, but we also need to confront this as well. And as Kamala Harris uh, said uh, in an NPR interview right, before, right after they were elected, you know, we can multitask. It's not just about doing one thing, but we can do many things. David Hogg, um, great to talk to you. We hope that whenever you encounter those hideous, poisonous people, you feel the support of sane people surrounding you. Um, thank you very much for being on New Day, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you. Three weeks.